What's up, slow gang? Schmulte here, bringing you an honest guide to Nightwolf in Mortal Kombat 11. If you're looking for a top-tier, all-around character that uses green magic, has excellent zoning, and a fuck neutral button, you should probably play Johnny. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. However, if you're not a mindless slave to the tier lists, or you're just looking to mix it up, Nightwolf is a great choice. In this video, I'll be talking about the Matoka Warrior variation, as it's the one that I've made since around the time I started playing MK11. There's definitely some use for the Ancestral Gift or Shaman variations, though. It all depends if you're looking to protect yourself or deal some damage. The answer for me is almost always deal some damage. So let's get into how you can do just that. Starting off with special moves, Matoka Warrior has five, only four of which are actually useful. The fifth would be his Spirit of Kiba damage buff. We'll get this one out of the way first because it's about as useful as the male nipple. We all have it, but it's easy to forget about. The damage buff is definitely solid, but it's a huge risk to use this move anywhere but full screen, meaning you have to either sit there in zone, mostly wasting your five seconds of extra damage, or slowly work your way in to hopefully get one combo and about 2% more damage. The Amplified Virgin lasts one second longer and has armor in case your opponent tries to punish, but it still has recovery frames, so the armor is basically useless in it. You're either blocking or taking damage unless your opponent is too scared to press a button. Not likely. The one way I've seen this move being somewhat useful is giving up a full combo to kick them away with stand 4 straight into buff. This is of course assuming they don't have breakaway ready, in which case, why give up the maximum damage combo, as well as any form of pressure on wake up. This move is stinky, I rest my case. Moving on, we have the Spirit Arrow. This arrow is a high that has 22 frames of startup, exactly double the startup of Johnny's green balls. However, unlike Johnny's balls, Nightwolf's arrow can be held, not by Sonya, but by you, to try and mix up your opponent's timing. When amplified, Nightwolf shoots three arrows, the second of which is a mid, so it can't be ducked without blocking. You can also tap double down to cancel the arrow using one bar of defensive meter. If you're an absolute mega mind, you could use this to bait something like Scorpion's teleport for a sick punish. Most of the time, just playing the game and being somewhat far away makes a Scorpion player teleport faster than you can say <laughs> but the cancel is still worth considering, I guess. The bow itself isn't that great for zoning, but combined with the reflector special move, Nightwolf can be a force to be reckoned with from a distance. Johnny spamming force balls? Reflect! Joker spamming Batsy Poo? Reflect! Sub-Zero spamming ice balls? Reflect! Next, we have the Rhino Charge, which travels about half screen, and if landed, completely knocks down your opponent. If blocked, however, you're at minus 16 frames, which means unless your opponent is surprised or completely oblivious, you're going to get punished. So don't just spam this out willy-nilly. If you amplify the charge, Nightwolf will jump up and do an overhead with his Tomahawk. If your opponent blocks the charge but fails to block the overhead, it's a crushing blow. By itself, this crushing blow does 90 damage, but your enemy stays stunned long enough for you to continue the combo. I'll showcase the bread and butter combos I use at the end of the video. The last special move is Rising Tomahawk, which you've probably already gathered is your main combo tool with the Matoka Warrior. This move is negative 18 on block, so you should use it exclusively on hit confirm to start a big combo. Amplifying on block can make this a little safer, but most players are gonna punish as soon as they see the first part of the special, so just accept your punishment and don't waste your meter. With special moves covered, I'll move on to Nightwolf's normals and attack strings. When it comes to jabs, your down one is pretty standard at 7 frames, but your best poke for jailing your opponent is the 8 frame down 3. This move is 1 frame slower, but it hits low, has pretty solid range for how fast it is, and an extra 3 frames of hit advantage to jail your opponent. This doesn't seem like a lot, and it really isn't, but it helps avoid getting hit with the... Your sweep is about the same range and exactly what you'd expect from a sweep. It knocks them down, or it's safe on block. Not much to say there. Your uppercut, or down two, has great range both in front of and above Nightwolf. So if you're one of those guys that likes to spam uppercut every time there's any kind of gap, you're gonna have a great time. This uppercut also makes for an excellent anti-air, which can lead to a combo if you're in the right spot. Back two is another really solid anti-air and leaves plenty of time to catch your opponent with a combo. This is a little slower than your down two, however, so it's mostly useful when there's more space between you and your opponent. As far as hop attacks go, they seem pretty standard. Nothing to note, really. I'm not one to use hops much in my day-to-day, -day, so 
I don't know, I guess judge that for yourself. Nightwolf also has some excellent jumping attacks, particularly his jump to Stone Crusher. This attack has awesome vertical range, and depending on where in the air you land it, has solid frame advantage for a follow-up string. That being said, Nightwolf doesn't exactly excel in the air, so don't be jumping around like Super Mario on his way to save Peach for the thousandth time. I'm starting to think that bitch is cheating. On Wake Up, Nightwolf has the Eviction Kick up 3, or the Moonrise up 2. Neither of these moves are particularly strong. Eviction Kick is obviously invulnerable, which can come in handy at times, but it's easily backstepped and punished because of its lack of range. Moonrise is fantastic for catching your opponent in the air above you, but otherwise it has much less horizontal range than your standard down 2, making it pretty much useless outside of punishing the Mario Bros that think jumping equals wins. <coughs> <laughs> for the most part, I try to mix in delayed wake-ups and mostly save my meter for breakaways, but be sure to mix it up. Next up, we have basic attack strings, starting off with your standard high starter, Axe Blast. This string is done with a simple 1-1-1 one, one, one input. Make sure to jail your opponent with that sexy down 3 most of the time. I don't think I need to explain any further why this is so important. The full string can be hit confirmed into Rising Tomahawk to start your combo. You also have a couple options to mix this string up, including 1-1-2, one, one, which has a pretty solid gap and is an overhead. The last hit is technically unsafe though, so try to use this sparingly. In fact, I usually stick to omitting the third hit of Axe Blast and occasionally letting the last hit fly straight into Rhino Charge. It's risky, but works surprisingly well. Next we have Ancestral Rites, which is done using back 1, 3, 2. This string has 17 frames of startup, making it pretty slow, but it advances quite a bit. The second hit is a low kick, which surprisingly trips people up some of the time, so if you notice your opponent stand blocking, don't be afraid to full send a charge or a rising tomahawk to capitalize on it. It's worth noting that the final hit of this string has a big enough gap for your opponent to counter hit you if they're ready for it. This hasn't happened to me yet, but when it does happen, you can mix in the Rhino Charge special move, which will come out much faster and punish their button press. Once the threat of the charge is established, you can actually just stagger this string on block and go for a grab or just another combo. Now onto Tomahawk Smash, done using forward 1-2. There's also a third hit of this combo when quickly pressing 1-2 again. The third hit is what I call a queue-up attack. I'm sure there's more accurate terminology, but that's what I got. This just means you have to press 1 and 2 back to back to follow up the next attack. This hit can't be special cancelled, and is minus 13 on block within kissing distance of your opponent. There's a chance you'll catch your opponent off guard when they're expecting it to be over, but the risk isn't really worth the small damage reward, and from what I've seen, it usually doesn't work anyway. All that being said, forward 1-2 is an excellent advancing mid to close some distance and hit confirm into a combo. It's minus 7 on block, which isn't great, but it's safe enough to warrant spamming the shit out of this move whenever you want to quickly get in. There's not much else to say about this move other than use it like you use your favorite hand when you're lonely, which at least in my case is all the fucking time. <laughs> Next up is Lion Wait, performed with 2-2-2. This string is straight up not useful. It's two frames slower than Axe Blast, and the final hit can't be special cancelled. Just use Axe Blast. Violent Divide is Nightwolf's overhead string, and can be done using forward 2-1, then queue up 1-2. However, you should only use the last part of this string if you see a hit. If you notice your opponent blocks, instead use 4 as the last hit. This will keep you safe on block, whereas 1-2 can and will be punished. When starting a combo with this full string, be sure to special cancel into Rising Tomahawk on the second to last hit. If you don't time this right, the final hit will knock your opponent to the ground. You can also special cancel the second hit, if that makes it easier, but you'll be missing out on some damage. Next is Deadly Talon, done using 3-1-2. The first two hits of this string are both highs, making it pretty risky to throw out on block. However, the third hit is an overhead, which will crushing blow if your opponent doesn't get hit by either of the first two attacks. The only way I've found success with landing this is dropping a combo on purpose and going straight into the string. With any luck, they won't break away, or up three, or roll, or delayed wake up. And you'll catch them right as they stand up, and with even more luck, they won't block high. I'll save you some trouble. 90% of the time, they're gonna block high. Nightwolf has only two unique crushing blows, and they're both overheads. 
just take your full combo, and if you want some sick crushing blows, play Baraka. That's what I do. Lastly, we have Wing Clipper, which is back 3, 4, down 4. This is another string I don't find very useful. It is a mid, with the second and third hits going low, and you can definitely hit confirm the second hit for a full combo, but this attack has very limited range, and isn't particularly fast. I'm sure you could incorporate it into your game plan, and maybe even get some good hits, but I just find that there are already better options, like Ancestral Rites. To summarize, Nightwolf excels in the mid-range game. You should utilize your advancing mids to punish your opponent whiffing attacks, or to chase them down like a meth addict chasing away their dreams. The Rhino Charge will be a huge help with this too. Not with meth, but with rushing down your opponent. Just be sure not to overuse this move, otherwise you'll get predictable. If your opponent tries to zone you out, remember to yeet that shit back into their face with your reflector. Even if they have time to block it, you can still respond with arrows of your own, or at least dash up and close some distance. Be sure to mix in your overhead where and when you can. It's especially useful as a meaty right as your opponent wakes up, and can be made safe, so there's almost no downside. You don't have any low combo starters to work with, but that doesn't mean you aren't going to annoy the fuck out of them with your down 3 and the occasional sweep. Like with anyone, it's important to mix in grabs as well. Nightwolf is solid all around, but besides said overhead and the occasional low from Ancestral Rites, you won't have much in the way of mix-up. Grabbing your opponent on Wake Up, or even doing the occasional shimmy, will help out a lot. If you have your opponent on the ground, don't be afraid to step back a bit and see if you can bait a Wake Up attack. All it takes is a quick forward 1-2 and you'll punish most up 3s. Jump attacks can be great in this regard as well, and even in neutral, your jump 2 can be a force to be reckoned with. Just be sure to not abuse this too much, or you'll start eating uppercuts as much as YouTube eats my ad revenue. Do your best to keep your opponent from jumping in on you as well. If they're close, stick with the down 2. If they're further away trying to close in, back 2 will send them to infinity and beyond, and you'll have plenty of time to dash up and catch them with a forward 1-2. That's going to be all for the comments portion of this video. Now we'll move on to combos. If you have any more questions or just want to see a Nightwolf main in action, consider subscribing or heading over to my Twitch. Anyway, thanks for watching and enjoy the combos.